We don't play the social game. We are social. Power 98.5. You're listening to Power 98.5, powered by United Angels Dream, your number one resource for public relations, entertainment, and multimedia. Contact them today at unitedangelsdream.com. Hi, this is Dan Aykroyd. He's progressive. He's beautiful. He's thoughtful. He's intelligent. He's powerful. He's positive. He is Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Empowering listeners from the U.S. to the U.K. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco. Hey, what's up? My name is Grant Kenoki. I'm a singer, songwriter, producer, and artist, and you're listening to Power 98.5. Stephen. He started looking into casting. You know what, Stephen? Oh, what the heck happened, guys? <laughs> we better redo that. <laughs> hey, happy Sunday, everyone. I know, Sean. Stinking internet. What the heck is going on here? I know, seriously. You guys ready? All right, here we go. Steven started looking into casting. Oh, no, what is, what is this stinking thing doing? All right, we're not going to play anymore. Try it one more time, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. At what point did you realize when you started looking into public? Re- oh no! Fuck no, that. Steven, pretty <laughs> Who were following this? Path? It really is effortless, Donovan. I mean, it's, yeah. It, just get on with the music. You know. Did you guys really think? Yeah. Internet, you fucking suck. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. (laughs) Listen, other people like to go ahead and polish their stuff. I'm not doing that. You really want to know, this is the thing. I know there's a lot of you that love my show, and I appreciate you. You're a part of the family. Over 200 countries. Apple Music, I am loving you guys. I'm going to tell you, I had no idea that Apple Music picked up my radio station. Radio station, uh, top in news. I was number one there for a while. I, I don't know. I got to double check, but it's an honor. So uh, big shout out, big thank you to Odyssey uh, that were able to get my satellite station on Apple Music. However, it's free on the iOS and Android app. Uh, you can listen to it on Siri, Alexa. We stream live on Live FM radio, streamer, stream editor, a bunch more. I'm and here's the thing, you guys already know this. It was over. It was 200 countries before Apple Music. I've got to be in more countries now. We have to. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Abs- yeah. Definitely. I agree with you, Sean. It, it's what's exciting is you know, there's this the support here is tremendous. Uh, we all know that I cover sports and, and you know, events. I'm looking at PGA Tour right now. I'm in conversations with them, looking to uh, uh, to get some coverage with them. Uh, it, it's amazing uh, of how this opened up. And this is the reason why. is because no, no disrespect to anyone else. There's a lot of good podcasts out there. I appreciate great production. You want it flawless. You want it seamless. But I like it different. I don't purposely have these little boo boos that come up, and we all know how internet and 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 uh, you know reception can play into the mix. And this is why I don't do video. God bless anybody that does video. Even major top networks have issues with doing live video. It is a mess. Until I have a sponsor that's going to come in and bring maybe a half a million or a million dollars in or whatever it's going to take, something that's going to make that broadcast studio so polished to where I don't have to think about sound quality issues, that's what's most important. And I'm going to tell you, whether you're doing podcasting or you're wanting to get in a radio, no matter what, your sound quality has to be impeccable. People don't watch stuff. They're buying groceries. They're getting their Starbucks. They're picking up their kids from daycare. Uh, They're dropping off their spouse. Like people are doing things. No one is sitting there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, half hour watching a video. So always remember your, your sound quality has to be 
at its exceptional uh, level of excellence. Uh, no, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And my whole point, as you guys know, my whole point of it is, is that when we go in, I don't clean things up. I don't want my team to be cleaning things up. We're not going to be taking out that little boo-boo and that that issue with the with the double video sound and all of that because this is what happens behind the scenes. I want it to be real for everyone. I want you to understand that everyone uh, goes through some sort of tech issue or you know editing problem and. I think what it is is just for you guys to just to have the best experience to know that this is what happens and I'm not focusing about perfection. It's about progress. So, yeah, exactly. Thanks, Sean. Uh, we've got a big lineup today. Big, big lineup today. We've got Dan Argetta. He's a professional MMA fighter. He's a lot more than that. I hope he becomes a reality TV star. We had a great, great conversation yesterday. He impressed me. I, I told him, I didn't tell this to anyone else. I'm going to tell you all. Dan is the first athlete ever since I've been covering UFC. The first athlete that walked up to me after a Q&A during media day, uh, post-fight, and was uh, gave a hug to Amy over at Fanside, uh, you know, shook Alex's hand. He came over, shook my. I thought to myself, that is real, real professional behavior. Like, I'm not saying to kiss anybody's ass. I'm not saying you got to go and walk up to all the media people or or the photographers or paparazzi or whoever. But the fact of it is, is that when Dan was done, he made it very clear that he was appreciative. And I, I'm like, this is how you do business. This is this is public relations. This is all about image reputation and, and branding and all of that. And this young 29-year-old that looks 21 has got it down pat. And I'm like, you cannot teach people how to do things. Myself as a publicist, even today with, uh, you know, some of my clients and people I consult for and, and projects I work on, these are all details and items that I share that should be done and need to be done. And it totally misses their mind. They forget about it or they don't realize how important it is. They go up, they do their thing and they walk off and like, you don't do that to people. It's like saying, hi, fuck you. Do you really want good press and good media and want to get really great contracts and really good business deals when you're just doing a high, oh, fuck you, goodbye? So big, big praise to Dan Argetta for doing that. I mean, wow. I mean, people have been in the entertainment industry for 20, 30, 40 years, 50 years, don't even really do that. And here's someone that's not even in his 30s yet and already knows how to be professional, so... A big, big congratulations and shout out to to him for that. And we're we've got him on today. Uh, we've also got a live interview with my good friend Dan Link. That is at one p.m. Pacific today. He's in Hawaii, so count that back three hours: eleven to twelve. What 10, 11, 10, 10 Hawaii time, one p.m. Pacific. One, two, two, three. 4 p.m. Eastern. I still love that I have to count. <laughs> so that's on today. He's from Naked and Afraid XL. He's on the new show with our good friend, Waz Addy, uh, 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 Matt Wright, uh, Last Man Standing. Episode 8 is on tonight. I've got to catch up tonight because I missed last week's. Last week was, uh, what was it, Father's Day. So I got episode 7, episode 8. I believe there's 10 episodes, season finale for Last Man Standing on the Discovery Channel is on the 16th. We're going to have Dan back on again to do a finale show. So uh, we're going to have him once again on today at 1 p.m. Pacific. And then we're doing a new episode with Jake Jensen in the Actors and Athletes studio. We're going to be talking about his new film with Zendaya debuting in September. So that is at 3 p.m. Pacific today. Dan, the man, ah, the, the uh, let me let me start over again. Did you, Christina? Yeah, where's my note? I don't need a note, but I like to have that little. Yeah, 
Thank you. Dan the Determined Argetta is a professional mixed martial arts fighter from Chicago, Illinois. He currently competes in a UFC with the 10-1 record. Uh, Dan was featured in ESPN's reality TV show, The Ultimate Fighter, season 29. He loves a good laugh, good style, giving back to those in need, smiling at every opportunity, and doing wild shit. Dan, we're all about doing wild shit, right? Of course. You know, that's that's the that's my motto. <laughs> <laughs> How's your day today? What are you guys up to? Uh, you know, I I'm in San Diego for the weekend with my girlfriend. We uh I had a buddy of mine lend us a luxury car to drive down here and visit her and got a nice hotel on the water for the weekend you know she's out here for two weeks doing a mobile clinic doing doing uh basically community dental on migrant farm workers out here for two weeks through usc nice so yeah we came in for the weekend and get to hang out you know i've been on the road for the last two months so it's the least i can do did you bring your dog with you you husky is it a husky? Of course, I'm staring at her right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> where, where, they gave you uh, what was it? A Porsche? Yeah. How are you liking it? Yep. Oh man, <laughs> it's more comfortable than my apartment. <laughs> what is it? One of those? What is it? The uh, one hundred and fifty thousand, two hundred and fifty thousand. What one is this one? Sure, I don't even know. I didn't even ask. <laughs> He gave, well, me the keys. he gave me the keys. I jumped in through the dog and said, I'll take care of the detailing and took off. Oh, well, if it's going to be more comfortable than your apartment, I'll be shocked if it's not at least it, well over a hundred, hundred K, maybe 150. <laughs> is, yeah, probably around that. Is it giving you the, what is it doing for you? I mean, honestly, to, to have this car for the weekend to be where you're at with your girlfriend, having your dog with you and all of this, is it inspiring you for some sort of future? Is it opening up some type of inspiration or idea of what you envision and want to see for yourself and for your family and life? Um, I, I guess it's a, it's a taste, but that was, that wasn't really the, the reason for it. You know, the reason for it was, you know, when you have friends that are trying to start their businesses and stuff and when they want to do a favor for me and in order to grow their business, you know, you, you do those things. So, you know, I, I have the car, I got to take photos for him and, you know, help, help him get his, uh, rental company, you know, more status. And it, it's cool. You know, I, I see that obviously driving this thing's nice, but this isn't my dream car. I'm a, I'm an American car kind of guy. And what would that mean? Chevy? Uh, uh, what, what would you be driving? Oh, man. I would be driving a 1993 Chevy Blazer. See, I said Chevy. <laughs> I want one of, those, one of those old Chevy Blazers. It almost looks like a Ford Bronco. Yeah, the box but, ones. Uh-huh. But the reason is... My first car in high school was a 98 Chevy Blazer. Mm. And man, did I screw that thing up. I wrecked it in a week. What? Mm hmm. All right. Hit a tree in a week. But, but the reason I want the 93, that was the year I was born. And I tell people all the time, you know, everyone during a training camp or preparation or if they want to. You know, if they're if they're stopping themselves from, you know, putting bad fuel in their body or whatever it is, I tell myself, I'm like, I could run off of anything. I could run off of canola oil. I'm a 93 <laughs> Chevy Blazer. These guys are treating themselves like Lamborghinis. Oh, well, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I drove one back in the 90s and they're fun to drive, to be quite honest. Yeah, they're, they're sweet. Yeah. Very fun. Uh, well, hey, but, at, least, at least you got the Porsche for now. Yeah, no, no. Trust me. I'm very grateful for it. Like this is uh, me and my girlfriend don't get to do this often. 
So it's nice to go enjoy ourselves and, you know, obviously the stresses of camp is going to pick up really soon here with the results of this past weekend. So Mm -hmm. you did exceptionally well. I don't know how far or how much you want to go into expressing um, what had happened uh, during that. Uh, I'm going to leave it up to you. I mean, what do you, how are you feeling and what's going on and what do you believe that uh, people should know about? Well, so I I had my third fight with the UFC. Uh, It was my first time down to this weight class, which is 135, which is one weight class lower than what I usually fight at. My first time down in over a year. And my first fight is against, uh, you know, someone that, the believed or the UFC believed would, you know, rise, rise to the occasion to become one of their top guys. And so I've been watching him fight for a few years now. And I worked my butt off this camp for three months with, with that opponent living in my head, rent free. Everything I did, every decision I made was revolved around beating him. And when I got in there with him, I was on his, ass man i it only took me a minute and 50 seconds to break him you know i had a submission i i went for eight submission attempts and the eighth one was cinched in pretty good and the referee called he ended it too early basically the guy was in a submission the guy was about to tap the referee ended it before the guy actually physically tapped because he thought my opponent was asleep Mm, I remember. And yep. And because of that, you know, it doesn't count as a win on my record since he made a mistake. So but when yeah. you, when you announce my record, I'm, I'm counting that as a win, man. That's a, I was nine and one. That's a win. I'm 10 and one. I agree. I, I, I I'm not, I don't have anything else to say about that except you you know the best call that you need to make for yourself. Yep. Agreed. And you are I, at I, peace about it right now, Dan? I know you and I talked a little bit, but where are you at? Right um now? It's a bit of a hole in my my chest. That it hurts. It really does hurt. Uh You know, that's why I like between you and I, like I said, I count it as a win and for me You know, we talked about it yesterday. You know, this could have been the best thing that ever happened. And we know what happened in that fight. So, yes, I'm at peace with it. Um, Do I still want to put the stamp on that one? Of course. You know, I'd like to go again and just to... I, I think everyone, like I said, everyone who watched the fight knows what happened. But I don't want that guy to have any reason to ever say he could have won. I, I, so, I, I'm processing. Yeah, yeah go ahead. I, I need it on paper. And when are you going to get it on paper? How many months from now? Um, well, I'm hoping to, I'm hoping to get that fight back in about eight weeks. Two months. When you usually do every three months from what you told me. Yeah, three to four. And are you confident? Are you confident that in two months, because you really stressed, I got to put it to you this way. You really stressed in the uh, the post Q&A uh, after the fight. Um, it's, it's a lot. I may be slightly paraphrasing, but, you know, you dropped down. What was it? 145 or 35? What was 45 to 135. Yeah. And everything that you put in, it's a lot. So here's the thing. Yeah, it's a lot. It's You're expensive to- too. Expensive, exactly, <laughs> as you said. Trainers, a team and everything. How confident are you that retribution is going to be had? Confident. I believe it. Confident. I'm so, I'm so confident that I'm actually concerned that the rematch won't even happen. Now, why do you I'm say concerned, that? I'm, I'm concerned that he might say no. And, and it, 
you know, I, this isn't out of disrespect. I like Ronnie. I like the opponent. He's a great dude, great family guy, good. He's a good role model for people. You know, I appreciate that. But he, I think he even knows what was happening in that fight, and he knew what happened, and he knew what was going to happen. Um, you know, his, his hand was literally about to tap, seconds away from tapping. And I know the position I had him in, and I hit that move a hundred times a week, and I try to finish it a hundred times a week. And I just don't see, I don't, I'm not too confident about him making it to the fight. And I, that's nothing on him, you know, we, it's an emotional sport, man. And if you feel down on yourself or like you won't be able to get that win, like, you know, you might not accept it. I'm not worried. I, I'm, I'm processing what you're saying and. In- What I'm hearing is, you know, it's still fresh. It's still new. It goes back to the conversation we had. And I really want to touch on this. Um, Decompressing. How long do you believe that it's going to take or maybe take without forcing it, Dan, to come to some sort of resolve and peace to be able to become so present when you begin to get prepped for the next eight weeks, that mental and emotional conditioning is going to be so essential because whether or or however you use or utilize what just recently happened, you, I'm sure you can agree. It is not in your best interest to bring the past and that into the octagon. Agreed. Agreed. And, uh, Honestly, I think it's going to take mm, 24 hours because tomorrow's Monday and it's right back to camp. The team gave me a week to kind of half-ass my training and to kind of get my body right, get my weight under control. It starts tomorrow. Tomorrow I have to forget that whatever happened and continue my training just how I was for the last fight. And I do that. If I do, and I, I was talking to a teammate about that. He was like, you know, when I've been in that position, you know, I, I pulled back from my training. I said, oh, this is going to be cake. This is going to be easy. And I said, I don't think I got that in me. I'm too scared. I'm too scared, man. If I'm not doing as much, as much to win this fight as I was. The last time I won it last week, it better be more. That's my mindset. I'm too scared to do less. Yeah, I'm not worried for you, honestly. I'm not. You're you're still going through the emotions. People don't realize what it really takes for you guys. The amount of stress and the the chemical changes and the hormonal changes and just everything you've got to put yourself through, even from when you told me of how much the 18 pounds you removed in, in what amount of time? Uh, about 24 hours. See, I wanted you to say it. 18 pounds. Hours. And I know you said that that's water, but still, that's dangerous. <laughs> oh, yeah. The thirstiest you've ever been times 18. It's almost like you uh, having a naked and afraid Discovery Channel's naked and afraid moment, but uh, oh man, <laughs> if I just gotta if I just gotta starve them out, I win. <laughs> Jeez, now I'm ex- I'm excited for you, and if I may ask, or if we can ask, uh, is the contract signed for eight weeks from now, or where where's it at? Um, it is not. It is not signed yet. Nothing's in stone yet. It's only been a week, but I think we'll have something, some sort of plan in the next seven days. And you've got to wait for his team to respond or give a yay or nay, right? Well, it goes through multiple people. It has to go through the matchmakers. It has to go through the UFC, the commission, and then last but not least, each other's teams. Okay. 
Oh, you know best. So like you said, if it's going to take a week, at least in seven days, then you'll find out and mm -hmm. look for it. As of right, as of right now, you know, in 24 hours after this little weekend trip, same goal. You know, I, 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 I don't worry about what my opponent's working on. I worry about being the hardest motherfucker to kill. And that means train everything. You know, I, I train everything. And, you know, another thing, like, people ask about, like, uh, you know, my, where does my confidence in that, like, come from? To just want to train everything. And like I said, it's, it's to be the hardest, hardest to kill. I, you know, I live a, I live a warrior's journey and it's, uh, it's not for everyone, but it's definitely for me. <laughs> what have you not accomplished in your life, Dan, that amongst all of that, your accolades that you you've been accomplishing, what do you really want to go for next? I want to become a world champion. I want to become a world champion. You know, it, it's that goal goes in waves. Some days you're like, no way, never, not even close. Other days you consider yourself a world beater. And that's, that's the roller coaster that fighters go through. You know, one day I'm the hammer, one day I'm the nail, you know, and it's just, it's up and down, up and down, up and down, but it doesn't change the ultimate goal. You know, and obviously there's there's small stones to be turned in between that. You know, obviously, like, I got to go on a, a win streak here. And I got to prove myself against, you know, guys in the top 20, 15, 10, 5. You know, so it's going gonna, it's gonna to take time. But that's the ultimate goal. You know, I know, I know what that belt can do for someone's life. And I think that, you know, I think I can do great things with it one day and it, it's it excites me because i know a lot of people who they want the belt for the money the car the house the girls the partying no man i just want to see i just want to see where that belt can take me i want to i want to know what the next opportunity for me is because you know th this fighting it's it's not it's not a career it's a it's a lifestyle and it's going to be full of, you know, new opportunities. So the farther I can make it in this, you know, I know the more opportunities I'll have elsewhere. Do you foresee yourself going into your forties doing MMA or do you have an idea um, of when your retirement is going to be, or is that just something you never put thought into? Um, I would like to go till I'm 42. I, uh, the reason for that is I have friends that are still, you know, they're faster than me. They hit harder than me. They're smarter than me in the cage. And you know, they're, they're about to be 40 years old. And then we, I have more friends that they're special force. They were special forces operators. And these guys said, man, I, what I would do to be 45 again. They said they felt their best physically and, uh, you know, uh, performance-wise when they're like 41, 42. They said they, they could have kept going. You know, some of them wished that they wouldn't have retired. They still wanted to go do badass shit and get some, these warriors, you know, till they were 42. So with that being said, like, I don't want to, I don't want to waste what those guys would have. You know, they're, they're. You know, they, they set the standard. Yeah, you're going to have a lot to look forward to in your 40s. It's an incredible decade to look forward to. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. Everyone I talk to that's successful, they say they felt their best in their 40s. Mm -hmm. It's almost like you got all the hiccups out of the way. You know what I'm saying? You nailed it perfectly. I'm 49, and... Uh, just turned 49 in April and uh, yeah, I, I never, I, I'm not going to dismiss my life at all or any of the timelines that I lived in. I am very impressed of how strong of a man and of a, of a person and a human being I am that I've been in the last, in this decade of in my forties, it's been, it's been incredible and, and, 
there's so much more that can say to that. But, you know, I've already told you before you head into your 30s, you know, clear up and come to resolve and absolve everything you need to now because 30s is uh, an interesting decade, Dan, to where uh, you're, there are times you'll be treated still as a kid or being young. And then there are times when you'll be treated and respected as being a young adult. It seems like until you get into your 40s that you're treated as a full-grown adult. But uh, <laughs> the 30s is a peculiar decade. My dad will still call someone who's 45 years old. And he's talking to me. He'll be like, oh, yeah, and this kid. And I'm thinking, oh, like younger than me, like 20s, 18. He's talking about a 45-year-old man. I was like, what? He's like, yeah, so think about it. When, you're, when you get a little bit older, you just know if uh, someone has uh, older siblings or parents still. And what he's always said, as long as he's on this earth, I'll be a kid. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Perception. You're always learning. Yeah, you're always learning. You got it. The second you stop learning, that's when you die. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're going to be learning all the way up to your death and even after, I'm sure. Yep. I've got to ask, I don't know if you've ever been asked this before, Dan, why MMA? Why this career? Why as in it's so cool or why why as in, Dan, you're crazy. Why MMA? It, it'd be like of all the all the careers, anything that you could have learned, anything you could have done, you know your life done better than anyone else. Of all the options and opportunities you either had or could have had by your own choice, why this career? It's the most honest one. It's the most honest one. It's the I feel like it's one of the only careers that you pay for mistakes you might have made as you were younger or you're getting compensated for all the good things that you did a week ago because you went into that cage prepared and present in such a good you know mental space you know it's the most honest career there is and that's why this last weekend hurt because I put in so much work. I, I did the honest work and someone else came in and kind of ruined that for the moment. Hmm. You know, so it, it just goes to show like, even, you know, I hope I get compensated, but if that happens, that'll prove what I say about it. It's the most honest way you can make, you know, it, I I have to earn everything through it. I can't. There's no there's no cheating it, and it's very it makes it very special. Yeah. You know, I remember working for a marketing advertising agency in Chicago, and it I didn't like it. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't feel. I guess I didn't feel completely authentically myself. Mm. Just and now let- through fighting. Just to let you know, Dan, real quick, we're getting reception issues. Signal issues are coming in, sounding slightly robotic. So I don't know if you need to move or where you're where you're at. Oh, uh, is it better? I'm showing full service. Can yeah. you hear me? I hear you. Yeah, it was going. You were getting a little bit robotic there. I didn't want to interrupt. We were hoping it would clear up a oh. little bit, but yeah. But yeah, it's. Uh... It's the most honest living I can see myself making. No regrets. It's, it's yeah, it's very it's special, man. It's very special. Like I told you yesterday, I used to do this shit for free. It was something that I was so invested in that I did for free. Something so dangerous and so it's it's quite, you got to make quite the sacrifice to be ready to go in and be ready to prepare. And everyone around you has to make sacrifices as well to, if they're, you know, if they're looking to support you and it just, man, I can't see myself doing anything else right now. 
and you feel absolutely proud of yourself for everything that you've accomplished to where you're at today, even what happened at your last fight. And, and rightfully so, you, you have every right to feel the way that you do. Are you still proud of yourself? Of course. I'm proud, but not satisfied. Well, it seems like you're going to be using satisfaction to your advantage in the next eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Definitely. What is it about... Dan Argetta that other people assume, but you would like to set the record straight on today. You know what? I'm not sure. I feel like I throw it all out there for everyone to know. I guess, I guess the best thing, the easiest, like the most clear would be, I'm not perfect. And I feel like I, I, I feel like that's pretty clear. Like I'm not perfect. Things aren't always sunshine and rainbows and, and I do deal with things and I do, I'm fucking crazy, man. I do have issues. You know, look at my, look at my career choice. Of course I got some issues. I'm, I'm willing to go in there and possibly get hurt. Like, of course, but we all do. I think the difference between me and a lot of people is that it's it's the courage, the drive. I just have the courage and the drive to go do it. You know, and it's I, I just need I just hope people know that hey, I deal with stuff too. And my stuff is a little bit different. I'm sure in your world through your glass your stuff is very big and important and stressful too. And kudos to you. Let's both get through it together. Let's everyone like, you know, just remember there's light at the end of the tunnel and you're going to get through those things. And so I want people to know that about me, that I, I do deal with those things. It's not easy. I've got to ask in your professional and or personal opinion through fact, because you know this industry well. Do people become an MMA fighter or a boxer or anything at this level because they want to, Dan, or because they have to, or because of both? I think it's both. I definitely think it's both. I uh, Something I talked to my dad about a couple of years ago, he said, Dan, I, I grew up in a great family, loved and you know, I was able to do things that other kids I knew couldn't like, not like crazy things. Like by that, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, we, we didn't, we grew up middle-class, but I still know that there's people that don't have as much as us. And it, it dawned on me when my dad asked me, he said, when did you realize you weren't like the rest of these guys? And I was kind of like, what do you mean? He goes, you know, all your friends, they grew up pretty, you know, a lot of your friends that fight, they grew up pretty messed up. You know, they didn't, they didn't have all the things you had. And I was like, oh, like, that's what he meant. I knew that right away. And I used it to my advantage because a lot of these guys, you know, the reason they're so tough or hard or they're not afraid to fight and, this and that because, you know, they went through a lot. They got nothing to lose. You know, I get it. They got nothing to lose in there. They're not scared. No matter what, they're bettering their life, win or lose. I don't have that excuse, unfortunately, or fortunately. I tell my dad this. I don't have that excuse. That guy who thinks he's going to beat me just because he had a harder life than me, I use that to my advantage because... I don't have any excuses if I lose. If that guy loses, he gets to say, oh, it's because I, you know, growing up, my mom or my dad didn't do that. Okay, great. That's an excuse. I don't have that. I don't have that luxury. At the end of the day, it's all on me. I was given every resource and opportunity to become the best at this, to become, I mean it, the best. 
And with that being said, I, I don't have the excuses that other guys have. So that's when I realize it. It's not something I have to do. You know, it, it's something that I choose to do. I, I choose that pressure. You know, I like it. It makes me feel normal, you could say. And that's okay. And that, that yeah, could also it, be great. Yeah, it makes this pressure makes me feel normal. People saying, oh, you know, I had a, a coach a lot while ago. Why are you doing this? You're not a fighter. Like these guys are, they're fighting for their lives and this and that. And I just blocked it out. I'm like, watch this shit. <laughs> I'm afraid. I'm afraid to go out there and and not beat someone who who will have excuses to as of why they are less. I'm afraid of that. I'm gonna go out there. I'm gonna whoop ass because I had all the resources. I I don't have excuses not to whoop ass. I appreciate that. And, and the honesty and the transparency, cause you know, I've been, yeah, asked- I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie and say, Oh, I grew up so hard. I grew up on the streets. I grew up. I'm not going to lie. I grew up in a loving family. I, my parents love the shit out of me. And because of that, I'm a better person because I share that love elsewhere with, with everyone that I meet because they taught me to be best me and be happy. And that, version of myself get stuff done that version of myself is happy and i know you are and i believe you are i saw it when i met you i saw it when you shook my hand when you came up to me and did that saw it when you went around the media room and acknowledged everyone Mm -hmm. you know it's real and it you got some other people that might say well, if you weren't like this or that, or you didn't have this, you'd be hungrier. Great for those people. I'm not going to sacrifice my happiness. I'm not going to sacrifice the happiness of the people around me. You know what makes me happy? Winning. It could be anything. It could be, a hey, I'll, I'll race you down in the parking lot. Winning. Winning satisfies me. Winning makes me happy because I it just especially in this honest living that I, you know, this honest career, it, it gives you everything. Winning gives you everything that you could have ever hoped and dreamed for. Everyone's are, everyone's hopes and dreams are different, but for me, it, it is, it's giving me everything I, I need. So for all those people who want to say, Oh, he's, he didn't grow up hard. He didn't. All right. You can keep your excuses. I don't get those. So I'll give you, I'll give you the hand. I got the handicap on this one. I don't get those. And then they step in there with me and realize, oh, I'm determined. I'm gritty. I'm determined. I'll get it done. I've got to ask, do you know what it's like to live life when you're not living? And do you love yourself as much as you do when you are winning, do you love yourself and enjoy your life? And are you living in those moments when you're not winning? No. Nope. That's why I I feel this black hole in my stomach right now after this last weekend. That's the honest truth. Like that's why a lot of fighters were a little cracked. You know, we're not happy unless we're winning. That's our, like I told you before, it's not a career. You're not, when you go home at night, if, if you got a really hard job, something goes wrong at work, but it's Friday night, you're out with your friends. You're not worried about work anymore. You're letting it go. And then you'll get back to it on Monday. Mine's not like that. I can't, I can't go out in those social environments or I can't enjoy it. If I know I didn't win and I didn't do everything because like I said, I don't got excuses. So my, my brain starts turning, telling me, shoot, you could have done more here. You could have done more here. You could have done more here. You shouldn't be here right now. You should be sleeping, you know, like all these things. 
So no, I'm not happy when I'm not winning. I guess, okay, no, let's change that. I'm not satisfied. Mm. I'll find the happiness throughout the day. You know, it doesn't change me when I'm losing. I'll figure out a way to smile. Like I said, I don't, I don't miss the opportunity to smile. And that's with all, everything in my life going on around me, including being in the gym. You know, I'll lose a fight and a week later, I'll be laughing in the gym. You know, I'll be laughing while I'm freaking sparring and fighting with my friends. But what's the one variable that I did for myself there? I'm in the gym. Doing everything I could. I don't need to be pissed off. I'm in the gym. So I'm happy. I guess you could just say I'm not satisfied. Yeah, I like that. I like the way that you, you process that. And um, Yeah, I had to go back because you guys probably looked. You probably thought of it like, man, he's just fucking depressed after he loses. <laughs> no, it's, it's underneath. Yes, it's underneath the surface, yeah, but... It is. That's in my control to yeah. to change my my view on things. And that's why I asked you the question. Because self-reflection is the most powerful because you can change your perception about yourself in any situation at any given time. And that's exactly what you did. You had the power yeah, to, to, to observe your own perception. Yes. That was perfect. I appreciate that question. You're welcome. It was worth asking. Because I know there's more to you. Like, I guarantee as much as you enjoy winning, I can see you playing down with the kids. I mean, you, you've you got your, your, your dog, you know. I mean, there are moments, even if you consider winning, Winning at being happy, winning at finding the best in life, winning at finding and, and having the best in moments, whether they're planned or unplanned. So I get what you mean by winning. It doesn't, uh, what I see and feel and hear with you, even the day that I met you is, uh, once again, it's all about interpretation. And um, I believe that you do your best to want to have value and be of value in everything that you do and in every moment, whether you're uh, practicing or you're training or you're officially fighting or whatever you're doing. Just like you posted, it was a post, either a post on your Instagram or it was an Instagram story. You had this huge plate of freaking food. I'm thinking, how the hell are you going to eat all that? But you look like you were oh, winning. The, the chicken one? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that was on a Saturday. <laughs> so that day, that day, because I knew I was going to eat like that. I told my coach, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go do a six mile run in the mountains. Then we're going to go to the gym. I'm going to do a 20 mile bike ride. And then we're going to go jump in the sauna. And then I'm done for the day. That's my day off. That's my Saturday so that I can go to this chicken restaurant. Oh, you were definitely winning that day because that was a huge plate. <laughs> <laughs> that was a huge plate. Uh, I got to get it. Oh, let me, Christina, we have any questions at all? Did anything come in? Okay. So I want to thank everyone for uh, being with us today. I'm live on air with Stephen Cuoco. What, my, what I call consider Dan... Uh, as much as we've known each other for a short time, it feels that like we've known each other for a very long time. Um, and that means the world to me. Uh, head on over to his Instagram, Dan underscore the underscore determine. Check out his page. Looks great. Loving it. Great energy. Uh, I definitely want to see you on. I, I know you were on the Ultimate Fighter, but I'm thinking of like Netflix to Circle or Amazing Race or Survivor, like like something like that uh, would be really exciting to see you in. Because talk about winning, yeah. I mean, to put you in that side of entertainment in that arena, Dan, you're you're gonna explode, and you're there's no gonna back going back. You're going to find out something <laughs> about yourself and you ain't ever going back. That'd be quite the, quite the journey. Any closing thoughts? 
for myself. Yeah. Um. I'm ready to get on that roller coaster again, I guess. <laughs> I'm waiting in line right now. I'm uh You got me cheesing from ear to ear. Cuz I'm li- I'm I'm sitting in this Porsche looking out onto the ocean right now with these beautiful I'm, I'm just I'm in a position where people they they dream of this because this is just right now in the present I'm just sitting here like looking but I still have all this other stuff I have a beautiful family I have a beautiful girlfriend I have a beautiful team of coaches and staff everyone taking care of me and Last but not least, I still have some of the best opportunities out there through the UFC. So I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy right now, Stephen. Does that make sense, Stephen? I'm happy right now. It does. The satisfaction, I'll earn it tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day until I go out there and get my hand raised. Who would you like to give a shout out to? Shout out to the Jackson Wink Academy, the Academy in New Mexico that takes care of me and makes sure that I go into fights prepared. You know, shout out to Cub Swanson for, you know, just guiding my career in the right direction. You know, Cub Swanson's a UFC Hall of Famer. He's my mentor, my coach, my best friend, like an older brother to me. Shout out to my family. And last but not least, you know, shout out to my girlfriend. I, I wouldn't be here if it weren't for her. I wouldn't be in this position. You know, the lights would not know where to point if it were not for her. And what about your friend's uh, car company with the Porsche? Oh, Zeke. Zeke. Yeah, shout out to Zeke. Zeke OC. He's an Orange County, Orange County luxury car rental. You know, he, he's the man. I appreciate him doing this for me. Is he out of New Mexico, Albuquerque as well, or just primarily? No, no, he's, a, he's in Costa Mesa. Okay. Oh, big shout out yeah, to he, Zeke. What were you about to say? No, nothing, nothing. There's a, a crazy woman doing TikTok dances in front of my car. <laughs> God. No, I'm not kidding. I'll... I'm going to take a picture right now and I'm going to send it to you. Oh God. I got to see this. This is crazy. I tell you, you guys be TikToking everywhere. You'd be TikToking in a freaking sewer. <laughs> Once again, we got Dan, the determined Argetta head on over to his Instagram at Dan underscore the underscore determined all great things. Dan Argetta UFC fighter, ultimate fighter, Season 29, uh, and uh, yeah, he was just recently here in Vegas and did an exceptional job in a nick of time and uh, impressed all of us. Nick, thanks again. I mean, um, Nick. Dan, thanks again for um, being with us today. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for the transparency. Uh, You're going to keep winning no matter what. Uh, once again, thank you, you Stephen. Thank you. You're what remember you are the determined. That is yes, sir. Dan, the determined Argetta. The, the name, the name I live into. It, <laughs> it, was, it, it wasn't given to me because I was determined. It was given to me because I was determined to live into that name. Yes, you did. And you still will. And you will keep going all the way into your forties, 42 or maybe to 45. Who knows? 42, 42. 42. I don't 42. think. I don't think the mileage will uh, let me go 45. <laughs> well, you never know. You may be surprised once you get into your 40s. <laughs> oh, thanks again, Dan. Hold the line, and uh, I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Thank you to everyone who tuned in today. Live on air with Stephen Cuoco on Power 98.5 Satellite Radio. Thank you for everyone who tuned in. Did you guys send messages? Ah, you did on Instagram. Okay, so no one sent. Whether you're listening to us on power985.com or any one of the apps, iOS or Android, we do have a messenger there. You can send in uh, your comments, uh, 
put in a shout out. Um, what do we have here? Omid. Thank you for that. I'm um, glad you enjoyed the show. Jan. Dan Link. You're going to be on in one hour. I hope you're ready, my friend. Thank you for the love and support as always. Ben Thompson, my guy. I agree with you. It is fire. Uh, I appreciate that. Oh, and then my good friend, Jay Wolf, music artist. Appreciate you always joining us in live. Oh, yeah, I got that. Oh, here we go. I just got the text message from Dan. And yes, here is a woman. Oh, my God. Pink, purple hair and a pink top. TikToking? I tell you, they'd be anyway. And that Porsche looks fire. Wow. I would drive it. I don't know if I would want one, but I, I've driven a Porsche before. Very good. Thanks again to Dan Argetta. Dan to determine Argetta. Once again, head on over to his Instagram, Dan underscore the underscore determine. All great things. Power 98.5 satellite radio, power985.com. We also have a new uh, a new show with Let Me Tell You with Lady T. That's going to be at 5 p.m. Eastern today. Uh, that I, I've... I'm excited for this one. This one is going to be really, really good. Um, I know that uh, she is a new fan favorite. Totally appreciate that. She's going to be discussing how to obtain healthy relationships for personal growth and empowerment without diminishing your self-worth. Definitely worth the listen. Once again, live 5 p.m. Eastern today and power 98.5 we've got dan link from naked and afraid xl and the new season of last man standing new episode airs tonight uh 5 p.m pacific but it's 8 8 p.m eastern i know i can watch it at five o'clock uh but check your local listings for when last man standing on a discovery channel is going to air for you and then a new show uh, in the Actors and Athletes Studio with Stephen Cuoco and Jake Jensen. Today at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, we're going to be talking about all things Jake Jensen and his upcoming film debuting in September with Zendaya. All that and more on Power 98.5. Have a great weekend, everyone. Shows and let's connect.